Wow. <laughs> That's a really wonderful introduction. Thank you. I hope we can live up to that. Um, so we've been doing National Poetry Writing Month. Uh, it's April. Every year, thousands of us get together across the world on forums and cry about how we can't do one poem a day for April. Um, and so it kind of delves into, around about two o'clock in the morning when you have to get your poem done for the day, you kind of delve into the strangest parts of your brain. So for inspiration, I turned to... Um, the, I, I got my title for this one from the title of a, a song in the Japanese songbook at the local karaoke bar. So this is called Super Love, I Need You Tonight. You find her in a karaoke bar, wearing plum blush gloss and plastic boots. You kiss her in a wine bar, wearing black vine gloss and vintage boots. You play her in a pool bar, wearing blue moon gloss and steel toe boots. You twirl her in a drag bar, wearing rum tart gloss and space girl boots. You catch her in a dive bar, wearing stab wound gloss and kitten boots. You track her in a dim bar, wearing trench coat gloss and pleather boots. You watch her in a strip bar, wearing nearly nude gloss and sticky boots. You meet her in a theme bar, wearing St. George gloss and dragon boots. You leave her in a sports bar, wearing steak eye gloss and boxer boots. Um, and another one that we've got from uh, Nape Raimo. Um, another sort of thing that's happened as you look around you uh, at the small and seemingly mundane things in your house. Um, for inspiration, and this one was uh, this one came from two small statuettes that have been on the windowsill for donkey's years, and I never realised what a nice couple they made. The old food taster and the stegosaurus. He knuckles its inch-thick cap of wrinkled skin so tenderly. Prickly hill, he murmurs in Mandarin, and the creature gobbles a little with pleasure, opens its beak and squints beneath those fingers. Soon I will be as baggy as you, smiles the man, all greyish and hooped. And he tickles a red spine on the dinosaur's neck until it wickers and purrs. Unless there is hemlock in the emperor's supper, my tongue is his tongue. He holds out thieved pak choy, which it chews as if in thought. Who would feed you, boy, if I took my lord's dose? Could happen tomorrow. Still we sleep. You're a strange sort of dragon, you know. Um, as I co-run a small poetry press with John called Sidekick Books, uh, we generally try to theme our anthologies that we put together around kind of strange things with everything from computer games to Japanese monsters. Um, and also John, I think, is going to be reading from uh, an anthology of birds. Uh, something we're going to be doing this year is called A to Z, so we're hopefully going to get uh, a bunch of poets together and get them to cover a certain subject from A to Z. Uh, one of the subjects is villains, and John and me have allocated ourselves Y and Z in each collection. So I got Y, and so I thought I'd go for someone I think is a bit more of a complex character than he's giving credit for. Uh, this is called Yosemite Sam. I got it licked, rabbit. I don't get mad no more. Watch this. Here's your Sammy boy. Someone knocking at your front door, rabbit. Dirty son of a battle stromy crat. Yeah, right hook, left to the jaw. Haw, haw, and keep on reaching for the ceiling till you reach it. I'm a taking the parachute. I'm a sailing with the tide. I'm riffraff Sam, Chillicothe Sam, Shanghai Sam, all honest Sam. I'm a steppin', I'm a hessian. I'm Sam von Schmam. There's your piano rabbit. Now play. Get a go in before I punch you, you hide. I'm a commandeer in this here clown car. I'm taking it back, see? In little bitty pieces. <laughs> um, and another one that actually uh, featured in both the pamphlet and um, Never 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 Come Back in two different forms. Um, it's actually inspired by watching the film An Education, although it doesn't need that. It was written for a food event, being the perverse soul that I am. I got letter A for that, um, and so I chose ants. When she's 16, when peer discretion is at a premium, when Belize is double geography and sweet Dresden is history, is still broken, you move in, aiming your barrel at her barrel of fish, and you offer her a lift, knowing the afternoon is annexed 
and she's itching in grey polyester, thumbs through school sleeves, backpack rammed with stupid, stupid books. And you grin and offer her the bag of ants. How low we settle. The twist of disgust, that jab between the plates and the gunners laughing, stumbling, dropping her weapon, reaching. The seedish insect body, citrusy, the bloody industry distilled into smoke, the gin of the abdomen, a flash of sherbet. As you tell her anteating stories of Ko Chang, of Colombia and Australia, of the tarantula in Cambodia, she chews toughly, staring you down, guy roping the soured corners of her mouth. She chews these ants to dust for you, who have become a spear for her, a rocket launcher she will fire backwards. She chews past nothing, past ant pockets of clarity, past the ghost ants scaling her body and trains her throat to open. Um, I'll ask you two more. Um, so this one was Napo Rimo last year, actually. Um, I told you it brought up some very strange stuff. I was actually uh, wrote it after Matthew Francis. Um, there's a fantastic pro um, poem called Dragons in the collection of the same name, where he ends every line with the same word. So I thought I'd play around with that idea and add a couple more in, but do a similar thing. This is called Joe Jens, Eight, and Bring Some Wine. The door knocker has been replaced with a laughing pug pup wearing a go straight in sign, and you obey, wiping your feet on a tiger court drinking by a crafty marksman. Paula, Carmelita, Belinda, and their breasts are here. You smell it. Someone's drinking, so you, someone's laughing, so you call, hello, through the dark house, and step out of your sorry soaked coat. Good drinking? You quip. It's Benny, you hear. Cellar Benny, first left and then through the lesser kitchen down the stairs. Laughing, they fracture the last word to stairs. You fold your coat and hope you're not too late for the best jokes, the prime drinking. You're certain it was eight and you got here early and can pugs even laugh? Look more like a frame to suggest laughing had been fitted to stretch a pug's mouth and is, is this the cellar? No, kitchen, all scrubbed pans, spices and drinking chocolate, but is this the lesser kitchen? Wandering back and forth, you realize the sound of people laughing does not alter, however you stray, and absently you crack open your Chateau Margaux. Drinking a tester, cradling the baby with its shawl of condensation and wiping your lips, you determine that soon you too will be laughing and slaying them with your banter. Belinda and Carmelita will slap their thighs and punch you gently, drinking in their anecdotes about soap and idiot colleagues and everyone will be so glad you came. You've been laughing to yourself for about a minute now and find yourself in some nether passage where a rat is drinking bad water from a hollow. You stumble and rip your shirt cuff. It sounds like a child laughing. Which bloody way is it? You ask the rat. And he dares you to admit you are lost. Anyone fancy drinking something a little pricier than Genjo's plonk? You venture. And the rodent looks up and then down. Hey, laughing boy, the cellar, calls a faceless reveller. Philip and Gretel just suggested poker. We stripping? No drinking. Loser does four fingers. You're good at poker and shake your compass. Come on, okay, stares and you're laughing. Is that a step? Is that still my hand and are the lights dying? You're drinking a tot a minute by this point, squinting into the dim distance and there they are, stairs. Someone is laughing right down those stairs, through that door and, oh, you realize your bottle is empty, the stain of drinking clownish around your mouth and walk upstairs coat yourself, leave. Someone is laughing. Oh. And to finish off with, one more Napo Rimo one. Uh, this one's fairly self-explanatory. This is called Titles for a Poem of Apology. Last night I dreamt you were bending over my body. I imagined you'll leave me. I would. In my defense, Charge. Part bird I charged into the window. The toilet window and the open road. Marie and the rest of my life. My Marie, who is not my Marie. One day in Paris, we will meet again. 
paralysis, the enemas we shared, embargo, embracing strangeness, the things I should not have done with your relatives. Love is a bald uncle, love scatters, lock picking, hide me, a holiday or the damson comb, my summer with Satan, self-portrait as Dorian Gray, self-portrait as the Titanic, losing at battleships, there goes my better heart, there goes my bit of heart, your slice of the earth, carrying Atlas, carry Anne and other old songs, song of a wretch, the soundtrack to your romantic suicide, Canada, the goose that laughed, get me Guy Fawkes, bombing the tenement, becoming a tyrant, hell tour, hotel, cancelling the milk, separating strands, your pubic hair is still in a plug hole and it looks like crumpled music, your servant, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you for having me. <laughs>